That's from the legendary. Woj podcast uh, the other day uh, that I listened to in its entirety. Bobby Marks is going to join us tonight at 5 o'clock. Uh, this is what Woj had to say about the Sixers' focus moving forward. The marching orders have changed in Philadelphia with the addition of Jimmy Butler. When they brought in Butler, what that organization was saying to Brett Brown was, okay, we're winning now. TJ McConnell is going to probably play more as the backup. They can count on him more right now. And they're trying to win. And and I think with Fultz, I wouldn't say they've given up on him. They they can't because I think they still know that it's, it's there in him. If they can get it out, they've seen the reasons they drafted him and they moved up. They've seen those reasons. Um, but I think right now that organization is focused on winning tonight's game. And that's not going to coincide necessarily with allowing Markel to play through this anymore. All right, so they kind of make this decision once they get Butler. This whole thing is over. We can't keep throwing him out there, as we all kind of know. That kind of is where this saga kind of starts here, all right, with this, uh, you know, the Woj. Now, the question comes up, are they willing to trade him? Why wouldn't they be? They picked up his option. That tells you right away they're – they picked, picked up, up his option before all this came out. No, no. They picked up it right. They picked up his option trying to trade him. That's why you pick up the option. Yeah, well, because friendly, the nine point seven the deal. Exactly. So you pick up the team option, it's friendly now, and it's easier to move him. They tried, they failed. They could it's, not find somebody to trade for him. That that that's what I was just gonna say. It's just the problem is who wants him and then how badly do the Sixers want to part ways with him? See, I if think they they're want to stuck between a rock him. and a hard. Exactly, I agree. I think they're stuck between a rock yep. and a hard place here. Hundred percent. The value of trading him it just isn't there. Nope. The egg on your face if he goes to another organization and becomes the player that you drafted. You're getting nothing in return, and that guy goes on to that. You're almost well, I, in a no win yeah, situation. I'm willing, no, I'm willing I to disagree. take that risk. I disagree with you. Like, I'm not going to three years down the road, the Sixers trade Fultz this year, and he becomes what we're hoping for. Right. I will not be mad or not saying that you will be, but just from my standpoint, I will not be mad or fault the Sixers for trading him this year. I think right now, like uh, what Bobby Marks just said, they need to win now. They're not in a situation to deal with all this right now, and they got to get rid of him. Like, see, I, he, see, I disagree. And, I think they are in position. I think they're at the point where – we don't really need this guy. We don't have anything to lose by just how he's not rocking the boat. Let's just let him get through this. And maybe we come out on the other end with a player that we thought we were going to get. But I don't because think. Because we're not just going to give him away for nothing. He's not hurting us sitting on our bench. Let's just hold on to him. He's not playing. There's a chance. They don't need him. No, but that's my point. So how do you go from they don't need him to now he develops into a player that they can use? Like, you can't go, you can't skip steps. What if he can't develop in this situation? He can, no, he, he, needs, he already hasn't. I, I know that. I'm just saying, he that trade and then he becomes the player he becomes, he might – it doesn't look like he's going to be able to become that player here. So you can't fault them for getting rid of him. And if well, he look, gets a new – It doesn't look like that today. Today, sure. The, the league you can't generalize and say like that – this guy will always no, stink. No, I'm just saying the from what I've seen now. The league doesn't have people like this. The league doesn't have top picks that bust. A hundred percent agree with you. That, but... that find their way and then turn into well, all stars. Well, well, that's that's not entirely true. Really? I mean, there are players not to his not to his stature. There are the number no, one overall. There are pick. guys that are taken tenth that yeah. may not drop twenty per game in their first two years. I mean, the dude is that 20. turn into good players, but there is no example of somebody who came in this high. That completely fell off the way in which he did and I restored agree their career to even a sixth or seventh man level. I'm saying, like, I, there, there has been no other example that is parallel to this. So why would yeah. you bank on that happening as far as, like, if, if a team well, comes to me and offers me two second why. round. Wait a second. If a team offers me two second round picks for Markel Fultz, I'm making that deal yesterday. No. The distraction is gone. I'm not banking anything on something that could happen that I can't even point to in the past and find a precedent for. Like, what are you hoping for Markel Fultz? He turns into, as Ryan said, something we all thought he did. We all thought he would be the third star to Embiid and this, Simmons. The number two to Embiid, scoring-wise. That's you, what we were hoping you for. Would, you would hold on. And, and again, I go back to where I began with this. Okay. Where do you go? How do you go, Mike? If from I, him not if he, playing and not part of if, this team to all of a sudden being relevant. If he came in and from Jump Street played with the skill set that he displayed when he was in college and in the summer league, and he was on the court, and he was shooting threes, and he was pulling up, and he just sucked, that's one thing. 
I haven't seen that skill set to suggest that he was that player and he stinks as that player. He has not been that player, which tells me there's something not right. But that's worse, in my right. opinion. That's Ten way worse. worse. I would rather him... Ten times worse. This have never happened, and he's just struggling as a young kid coming out of out of college. That In that situation, I would be more on the defense of him saying, let him grow, let him put up his shots, let him go through a couple off seasons and see what we have. But this whole situation... But that's the reason why I think they're unwilling to say, this guy just can't play, or he's not the player we thought. I think they're saying... I don't Something think, yeah. is not right because he's not the player that we drafted. He's it's clear. Watch the video of him. Forget his but college that's the tape. Problem. Forget and, his and, college and tape. How much time? But are we you haven't continue? seen that guy. So how I know. can we say that he's not that guy? Because well, I don't he think they're saying that. that he's that guy. No, but he's had opportunity to show you, and the fact that he hasn't shown you says that right now he's the one. The burden is on him. How do you go from a guy who shot forty percent three pointers to shooting none? That's the, what's happened. You're just to him. telling me that he just absolutely stinks. No, no, but my no, but he's three? got. I mean, we are. We, we all know what he's got anything. going on. What happens? Is, I'll give you a perfect example. Of what happens in the NBA? Victor Oladipo happens in the NBA. A yeah. guy comes in highly heralded. Where was he taken? Um, two. Like, two, two. Okay, he comes in. The expectations to drop twenty a night right away. Help that Magic team immediately. It doesn't work. He's given thirty plus minutes. He starts some games. He comes off the bench. It's tough. It takes him a couple of years. Right now, he's a top 15 player in the NBA. He's now averaging over 20 points a game. That Scorer. growth that growth is what... But you need a base. Markel Fultz is in quicksand, man. That base is gone. That That's what I'm saying. That base is negative. I understand you everything you're saying. My question is, what is this the is explanation? Anthony Bennett. What this is, is the, not Victor Roladipo. I would say it's Anthony Bennett if he was the same player that you... Forget his college tape. All right, take that out. Watch his, if he was even the summer league version of himself and then couldn't play, I would agree and say, eh, he just can't play. He's in over his head. He ha he hasn't even been the summer league guy. We have not seen his skill set duplicated. But do you have the opportunity? The skill set that he's showing in the NBA is not even the skill set that he displayed in the summer league, which suggests there is something not right. Yeah, well, nobody's arguing with that. I mean, we know. Which is why that. they are unwilling to just say, we got to get no, no, rid of no. this guy. No, I don't no, no, no. think. Yeah, you're, that, you're that, that's, that's that where you're that's totally where, bootstrapping that. Yeah. You're taking the reality that nobody wants him, and now you're saying, "Well, nobody wants him," and the underlying conclusion is that they don't want to trade him. No, they can't trade him because nobody wants him. It's not nobody wants him, therefore they don't want to trade him. And they're going to say we're unwilling to trade him because just like what they've been doing before, he I think they're all unwilling to trade him for for low nothing value. I think they would be willing to trade him for a, a first round pick or a player that could help them. That's exactly they're not what I was getting willing to, to just Look, give him away for nothing not. because no, there's no, no. the possibility what that he gets that? through this. What oh, makes I, you say I, because they couldn't have traded him? No, they weren't no. given nothing. They like, want they're going to play nothing, him. There's nothing. Part of me. There's nothing out there that indicates that a team offered them even something. Nobody offered them. I'm not anything. suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that anybody offered him anything. I'm saying if someone offered him two second-round picks, I don't think the Sixers would take that pick. Based off what? B based on my opinion that they believe that the guy they had in Summer League has still not been there yet. Wait a second. Why? Like, what are you pointing at that sh that tells you in your brain, let me connect this? I, well, he, I don't I Because don't I it. watched the tape of him play, and now I see the tape of him play, and it's not the same human being. No, you're you're defending a different point. My my question to you is, what have you seen so far in all of these discussions and talks and everything that would indicate to you that the Sixers are holding on to Markel Fultz for any other reason than nobody wants him? Because Gil is saying... I know what he's, he's saying, but no, no. how? Like because he's saying, saying he's saying this is a what we've seen is a different guy. What we've seen is not Fultz. He's still young. He's still going through all the mental issues and potentially the physical issues. We don't even know about that. But Sixers are saying, let's let him try and get through this. Give him a full attempt to get through this, and hopefully we can get the original version of Fultz or close to it. And then maybe we can trade him for value. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying the Sixers are saying, you know what, right now this is too early in this thing. It's crazy. Let him go see the specialist. Let him go work out the mental issues. Let him make his mistakes this year. And then hopefully he works through it to where he provides some value. And then we can I trade think him. I, I, don't know, I don't know league. where that's founded. Like, uh, well, I, if he came into the league. Did you see this John Gonzalez ringer thing? Yes. 
If he well, can't... I, that's pretty damning, is it not? Yeah, but what did you you just brought up Oladipo? Now I'm arguing against it, and I'm more on your side. But I I just get what Gil's saying. You just brought up Oladipo, who went through it for six years. He was not he the guy who this. No, no, I know, of course not. But I'm a saying night, fifteen a night. But if you if if you way, this kid scores eight points a game, and half of his offensive game he hasn't even tried yet. Yeah, if you bring up Oladipo, then you can argue the same thing for yet. Fultz. You say yet, like like it's some operative word. Or all of a sudden, he's going to flip a switch, oh, and I, now he's trying. No, but why would you put I, money I in this stock? I don't know stock? that he will or will not. No, he no, might no. never. You do know at least enough. Based on what you've seen on the floor, which is what you're arguing right now, Ryan. What am I arguing? The fact that we've actually seen something on the floor. I personally don't think we've seen anything on the floor. That's that's why they're not going to trade him. We haven't they seen the guy that they wait, drafted. Wait, wait, wait. Right, wait. right. That's now, not... now, now you have been brought into his circle of nonsense here. No, I Let, haven't. Yes, let's look no, at this logically. Let's look. What's more? Let's just look, remember what I brought up. Occam's razor. With uh, can I just say, explain how I'm? How what's I'm... more logic right now? Like what's more logical when you look at this? Is it on side A that the Sixers picked up the phone and said we try to get rid of this guy and nobody offered us anything, not even a second round pick, or B that after everything that we've seen, including the latest from Mark, I'm reading this from Real GM from Markel Fultz, definitely has the yips. To everything mm -hmm. else that we, where nobody will tell you that they believe that he's hurt, that the Sixers are still, still resistant in trading him because they believe in him, not that they couldn't find any offer. Like I, I don't know how you guys can both think it's it's that. I don't think that. I don't think. Neither that. do I. I'm just. I'm just, just laid out for eighteen I do not, minutes. It was. Aton, I'm on your side, but I I understand what Gil is saying in the fact that. No, we haven't seen the original guy. Don't allow guy. him to get away with that. No, I'm not getting away we with it. I'm just saying I'm on your side with it that they are they couldn't trade him right now if they tried. And if for some reason the Suns pick up the phone and say, we'll give you a second-round pick, they don't Hold want on. that second-round pick. No, they don't want the second-round pick. By the way, what, what, okay, Markel what, what? Fultz. But I, if it was me, I would take the second-round pick. What? Markel Fultz in college averaged five three-point attempts per game. If you told me he came into the NBA and jacked up three to five three-point attempts every single night and couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, and they just decide, this guy can't shoot a lick. Th they he haven't just, just decided, Mike. They've had two years, a year and a half. Again, he is... He wasn't hurt. We know for a fact he wasn't hurt last year. a game. Okay. What but, is your explanation as to why he went from five threes a game to zero? Because of something going on in his oh, brain. Yeah, he's mentally he a mess. Is, okay, he's not we, the same guy. We know his shoulder wasn't hurt last year. Exactly my point. So they are holding on to wait to say, you know what? At one point, this guy shot five threes a night. And by the way, but was you may never good. get him. Why? But why? You, why? But still. Exactly. But they don't have the definitive answer to that. That's what I'm saying. No, they. So they're instead of taking a second round pick. They will wait a little bit longer to see if he gets to that point because the second round pick will be on the table at any point. So what do you think is happening? That's not true. What if do you think is happening? Out, after if the, the guy comes out and sees a specialist and his wrists hurt, then you're not going to be able to move him at oh, all. Come on, the what? wrist, the foot, the this, the that. that that's my point, though, is that if there's an actual injury attached to him, the longer you go, the more he's devalued. What? What? Why all of a sudden would somebody then say, you know what? It's been four months. The guy hasn't played. Let me go back to that same deal I had when he was fresh off of playing. What do you anticipate to be happening December 27th, one month from today? Not what you want the Sixers to do, but after the specialist, all what goes down and he's back from it, what's going to be the deal with Fultz, McConnell, and him on the trade market? I don't know how Markel Fultz reintegrates himself to this team playing. Therefore, I don't know how, to Mike's point. But now we're seeing them come out and they're my, saying they are going to integrate him. My point let, is let, they let don't happen. need him. Let they can just let him sit and keep trying to work with them. Okay, but how do you go from they don't need him trying to work with him at some point you're going to have to see what he does on the floor you can watch all the drew he needs videos game action. you want right so but the game action is now sacrificing where you've gone listen we knew this as soon as elton brand made that move with jimmy butler that the whole markel Fultz thing was over all right so if to your point they still had this faith in markel Fultz, why did they go from zero to 60 or in this case 60 to well, zero which is they don't have starter the minutes from in him. him now but that doesn't suggest that next season they might not say, let's go through training camp, let's go through this uh, exhibition season again and see if this guy finds a shot, and rather what? than take a second-round pick. What? 
So you're going to sacrifice being a top three team in the first month and a half of next year to see if Markel Fultz can play? The second they just round did pick's going to help you? They just did that. Guess what? You ain't going to be able to trade for Jimmy Butler next year. No, it's not that it will help you. It's that it clears it. Mm-hmm. Elton Brand doesn't owe this team or Sam Hickey anything. Uh, this is from uh, Bobby I mean, Marks on Fult- uh, Fultz's future. Is Markel Fultz still part of the future? I, I believe he is. But they're in the business of winning games right now. And from a developmental standpoint, I don't want to say pushing Fultz to the side, but they're going to go into that mindset. You know, we're not going to put Markel Fultz in the uh, in the fourth quarter to see if he can figure it out. Right. Maybe you could have done that if you're a 500 team and you're to, it's a feel good story. But right now, that team, that goal, of that team is to get a top four seed and, and compete in a in a wide open Eastern Conference. All right. So they both kind of agree. Like, look, they're at the point where. Their mindset has changed. We're not just going to let this guy develop in the middle of games anymore, which kind of goes to what you guys are saying. Like yeah. They've already figured out in this particular season right now, there's something not right. We've got to move on from this whole situation. But as Bobby said, they've invested a lot into this kid, and I think that is why because they don't think they can get, and, and he talks about he doesn't think they can. Here, here's what he says. I don't know if there's a big enough body of work for a team that's interested in him to give up first round picks, which as you as you see now are, you know, rare rare to come by. There's not many outstanding picks that are owed. The the lack of body of work could help the Sixers though. Well, because there's another team out <laughs> there that has argument. the same mindset that I'm laying out there. Exactly. Which team? Some Cleveland, some idiot Phoenix, in the front office. Cleveland, Phoenix, a team that just says, look, we're so bad, we have the ability to put this guy on the floor for 30 Ooh. minutes a night. Ooh. What? Let's identify, I'd love to, when we come back, identify a team that in the backcourt, the most important tandem that you can have in the NBA right now, is willing to sacrifice 30 minutes a night to give Markel Fultz a try. All right, we'll get that. More from what Bobby Marks and Woj had to say on the other side. There's some other good audio here, and Bobby Marks is going to join us at 5, so don't go away. Sports Bash brought to you by Matt Black Kia. Matt Black Kia wants to get you approved today. They're located at 6211 Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township. Plenty more to get into. Uh, I, I have a couple teams that, that uh, would be probably very okay playing them for 30 minutes tonight right now. As opposed to drafting somebody in either in the back end of the first round or second round. You sound like my Twitter timeline. Back with more. I'll have Bobby Marks to come, uh, climb into the conversation a little bit later in an hour. Sam Carcitti on today's Flyers pressure, their fallout from Hextall being fired. We'll have NFL with Johnny Mack at four. This was, you know, there's so much, you know, we're still kind of conversing about it in the breaks Where's here. The camera? I Dude, the I know. Camera. We should have went live just now in that break because that was, My that was great. You know, we I all, the all funny part is you up. have one feel, I have another feel, and you feel I agree. Half of both of us. I do. I was just telling Josh in the break room. I was like, I agree with partly Gil and partly Aton. Like, oh well, how much do you agree with me? Let's start there. Okay, so here's because <laughs> I, I think I can pull you over to my side. No, there's you're not going to pull me over to either side because here's the end of the day. Well, what's thought. the pie chart tell you? Is it fifty fifty? Is it seventy thirty? Where do you put the percentage of how much Fultz do you believe? in Philly, I believe, is done, and the Sixers need to part ways with him because just what Bobby Mark said, short term right now, Philly's looking to get the number one seed in the East. All right? It's still early on. This team, Jimmy Butler and Bede Simmons and the rest of the crew, they can make a run to come out of the East. Fultz right now, it doesn't fit, and there's too many issues, too many things going on. I Having think, said I that, this, I think for this year, I think he's a lost cause. Absolutely. I think he's definitely a lost cause. <laughs> There's there nothing we've seen. debate on that, though? Yeah. I mean, the, the guy's I'm, No, because I'm just saying that you think that I'm sticking up for this kid. I think he's been a massive disappointment, and he's a lost cause for this year. That being said, I don't think they're willing to just give up a bag of nuts for him. I don't either. If well, I was the GM, I would. If I was the GM and the Suns call me and said, I have two second-round picks for you, I'd make the trade. But I know that the Sixers aren't going to do that. And I'm, I'm they? not giving up well, on why, why shouldn't they? I went through this whole... I'm sorry. Well, right. no, that's what we're arguing is should they or shouldn't they? Okay, but I went through this and Mosher texted, right? Jeff with a J. A G, pardon me. Unbelievable. He texted me this. Somebody texted me why they do that. Something about a giraffe. I don't know. You'd have to ask Mosher this. What, a giraffe? Yeah, Jeff the giraffe. Was it an old... Some cartoon when they were kids that... 
people were popular. So, so when they went with Jeff, they went with Jeff the giraffe and went G, and then the old schoolers went with the J. No, I, so he's named after a, a cartoon giraffe? We'd have to check the origins of I that got name. it right here. Someone what, <laughs> because somebody tweeted, was it Patty who no, still hasn't responded no, to me about the no. Flyers tickets? Get off no. my lawn one Where's my three. accountant? Where's Patty at? My accountant texted me Your this. Your accountant, wow. Jeffrey the giraffe, formerly known as Dr. G in the 50s, Evolved in name and appearance over the next decade to become the official mascot of Toys R Us. 50s too soon. So when they use the G to the Toys J, R Us. they're thinking of the giraffe. Uh, 50s too soon. All right, go ahead. I, I would imagine that you would have names Jeff with a G before the inception of that <laughs> giraffe from Toys R Us, right? Yeah, it's probably from like the 1700s. We went through the same thing. Jeff and I were doing shows up on the Fanatic when Okafor was... Up and down. Oh, God. And we battled people nonstop that you got out ahead of it. The Celtics made Okafor, two. Okafor, totally different situation, though. No, no, no. Hold on a second. You had a guy. No, 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 no. Why different is it a totally different situation? Because his skill set was on display. You saw exactly who he was in college at this level, and he couldn't translate from that player to this player in the NBA. You saw what his skill set was. And you, you still had teams like the Boston Celtics who made not one but two attempts to trade for him. And the growing mantra was, no, you don't want to trade. I remember having these conversations. You don't know. You don't want to trade Okafor to Boston because I don't want to have to see Okafor go up against Joel Embiid. I'm telling you, verbatim, these That's conversations. Insane. People well, you are, remember when he got here, he was scoring 17 points a game. But that so was Michael Carter-Williams having a great rookie season as I'm well. Not, I'm, and though, But no, here's my point. But I'm not saying I agree guys, with those callers. I'm agreeing with you. You should have seen that Okafor's skill set as a college player and the pro were the same. Yes, and you don't even have that with faults. Like exactly. You couldn't even get, but with the same opportunity. And that's why I don't trade him. But he yeah, had the same get, opportunity. <laughs> but he had the same exact. Point. No, I didn't. You just made my point. No, I didn't. He, no, I didn't. You're using the same you point already, for different no, 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 things. Hold on a no, no, I'm not at all. Michael Carter Williams. I'm not faulting you for Michael it. Michael Carter Williams and Julia Okafor came in rookie seasons fifty times better than Markel Fultz with the same opportunity that Markel Fultz had in a rookie season. Markel Fultz was so did not even get close to living up to any type of expectations. We knew what Michael Carter Williams and Okafor were right away. Still. They were better than faults. So you don't have anything with faults that you can point to that's positive. All you can point to is the negative. They were better than faults because faults hasn't been the player that we... With the same opportunity. Here's so the, that's not the same no, point. That's not what I'm saying. What is no, Fultz, I'm saying that you don't have the same minutes. What like, is show, me, show be, me those minutes. Show me those opportunities in which Markel Fultz shows you something better than either Okafor or Michael Carter-Williams in the rookie did. Year. Because if, you can't. If you have to you but I'm not suggesting him. that he is. But that's why you trade him, and that's my point in this whole thing, is that you've already seen examples with Okafor and Michael Carter-Williams of getting out of something either no, early you're missing with my Michael point. Carter-Williams or Okafor, where they held on too long. They could have traded Okafor for a first-round pick to Boston, but they failed to. But that's part of the gamble, Aton. That's also part of the gamble. Okay, but I'm willing to take the gamble with Fox. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just saying, what do you think Fultz is going to be? If you have to say right now, on record, what is Fultz going to become? What's his career look like? What he's now? A complete bust, not able to stay on the court. No, that's what I'll, he is I'll right now. You, I'll give you what he is. He is the guy that's going to get you 20 minutes a night at most. Seven to eight minutes. Three years from now, is he still in the league? Probably not. Uh, Bobby Marks on his sample size. I mentioned the body of work. You know, there are there is that small sample of him when he has the ball in his hands and he is the you know the primary point guard on a court. He there are some good things there. You know, I mean, we certainly scrutinize his free throw shooting and his ability to get to the rim and and, and certain things. But if I, I would be more hesitant sending him down to the G League right now uh, because I think how the schedule and how the league is set it up now where there's not many back-to-backs anymore that you are practicing more. So he mentioned him as a primary ball handler that he has shown some good things. Here's the thing. I get it that they think he's a point guard. My point is, I don't know. It, it, it went, yes, he's a point guard, but he wasn't the traditional point guard that he is playing right now. He was not that player where he was just a no, ball. He was a complete scorer savage. Correct. When he was in college and in the summer league, he was the ball dominant player, but he was not a distributing no, point guard like he is playing right now. The guy that they drafted was a guy with the ball in his hand who was a three tiered offensive player. He could blow right past you, he could pull up off the dribble and hit the mid range jumper, and he would shoot the three with regularity. 
the pull-up jumper and the guy shooting the three, that guy has not been seen on an NBA court yet, which is why I'm telling you I don't believe they're ready to just say, Okafor and Michael Carter Williams. All the skill sets. Aton, Aton's saying that guy's dead. They've had That's the point. They gave him starter minutes at this season. What are you talking about, man? He was out there as a starter this year. He had every single opportunity to I'm show that. I'm not saying he hasn't had the but opportunity. No, 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 but you're omitting that in your point. You know what? I, I, I'm going to steal. That's not fair. But I'm, not, but I'm saying he has been given the minutes. But for whatever reason, so you're just saying the guy that we saw in summer league was a fraud. No, in the I'm college saying, no, but that guy's that, gone and lost. I'm saying you've seen and, some and of the best putters that he will never ever come do you back. Know, you don't the, know yes. if he will, and that is why no, they no, hold no, on no, to no, him. No, 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 no. Thank no, you. No, no, no. That is wrong, and that is bad, faulty logic you're subscribing to. I'm not they saying tried, that it's right or wrong. Trade. I'm saying that's why they don't trade him. No, no, no. I'm explaining why you're wrong. They picked up his option to try to trade him. They were able to trade Robert Covington and Dario Saric. They were not able to trade Markel Fultz in the deal with Kawhi Leonard. They mm -hmm. were not able to trade Markel Fultz in a deal with Jimmy Butler. They were not able to trade Markel Fultz with anybody. But the intent was still there. So how can you, A, omit the fact that the Sixers tried to trade Markel Fultz and failed, and B, gave him Again. starter minutes at the start of the season, and he failed to live up to that opportunity? Again, I said Where do you earlier. see? Hold on a second. Where do you see that this is all about them still believing no, in him. What I said was, if there was a trade that they could get a first-round pick, a Kawhi Leonard-level player, they would trade him immediately. I'm saying they're not willing to give him up for a bag for of balls based on, what? based on the fact that there is a possibility that he becomes the player that they drafted. So, yes, they would give him up for something that is a proven commodity or a high the team has already shown you otherwise through their action. They traded for Jimmy Butler after a failed but experiment. That has nothing to do with, no, with his value. It did, definitely did. His minutes was he was the one who sacrificed minutes. It wasn't JJ Redick. The arrival of anything to do with it. Yes, it does. The arrival <laughs> no, of Jimmy Butler. Doesn't. I'll explain it to you. The arrival of Jimmy Butler and the trade for Jimmy Butler sacrificed Markel Fultz on the floor way more than it did anybody else. No question. Okay, so that right there is a direct indication that the team gave up on Markel Fultz for this season. Why would they then come? How would they then come back to Markel Fultz next year after they've already established a contender with Simmons, Embiid, and Butler? Because they could say, look, we, we're now adding a piece that we didn't have last year that is much improved. And when are you going to know what that piece is? In Summer League, where he's not going to play or going with Drew Hanlon like they did last year? Well, this goes back, <laughs> like, this goes back to, to my question that I asked way back in training camp or recently about, did they see this guy in training camp shooting in practice with regularity? Yeah. So at some point he was shooting in practices, making three pointers. But that's that's part of the bigger problem is the guy's lights out when the lights aren't on, and then when the lights come on, he's a deer in headlights times ten, and that that's a bigger concern and an issue. Is the more you got you put him out there, the more his value is only going to go down. He's got the yips, man. I mean, he's got more than the. I mean, he has the yips times a hundred. I mean this this kid, and that's he was why I'm saying a free throw, man. But that's Come on. that's where I say, listen, trade him and give him a fresh start and let him go screw up There's in Phoenix for two that. years. Oh yeah, right. Just like that square basketball that people are using now to shoot free throws with. What happens after the spe after this <laughs> specialist visit? The, this info comes out. Do the Sixers adjust their plan or line of thinking with Markel Fultz? If we hear a report on. Markel Fultz's shoulder is fine. He's going to continue to search for new specialists to find the problem. Well, like if this drags on, the, then they need to get rid of him for a bag of peanuts. That that's my well, opinion. After this whole week goes by and yada yada, like are they going to go to Doctor Nick Rivera and finally be like, hey, you need to say something's wrong with this guy's shoulder? Well, that would have been yeah. down. What to. are you waiting to hear from the specialist? I don't no, care. No, no, but hold on a second. If yeah. he's hurt, <laughs> if he's hurt, then you know. That you're not going to be able to trade him at all, and they blew an opportunity. If he ain't hurt. To, okay, but I'm saying if he's hurt, sure. But I'm then saying the he ain't. blew an opportunity to move him. All right, even if, and I'll concede, and I won't as far as in real life, but hypothetically, even if a team did offer up something like a second round pick, that's a blown opportunity. And let's say the specialist, which we all believe, comes out and says, "Hey, man, we checked them out, but there really is nothing wrong with them." That makes this thing 50 times worse. Well, and that goes into some of the things these guys were talking about on this podcast, which is, for whatever reason, 
this team has accepted all of this nonsense. His teammates of, hey, you took my starting spot, no animosity. Hey, you took my minutes, no animosity. You're going to trade him to another team and these guys are going to act the same way? I don't think so.